Okay, hello everybody. So I'm going to resume my regular posting. Um, I just decided to spend a little time today working on some reads that I started last week and thought this would be a fun one to sort of chronicle the finishing process. So here is where the crow starts. I mean, it's resistant. It's got all kinds of rattle and rumble and it's flat. It's also a very dark piece of cane, um, kind of spongy, not typical cane. This is some mystery cane that I was given to me and I'm not sure I like it, but I'm trying to make it work. So stay tuned. All right, so here's what this read looks like. I mean, it doesn't look bad. It looks like it should work, right? But it's got some issues and I think, yeah, even when I look at the slope that way, it's not so bad. Aha! Uh -huh. But on this, on the left side, my transition into the heart is a little bit different than on the right. And if I really tilt it down, you can really see it. So I'm going to fix that first and then we'll see what we've got. Here is what's so interesting. So because the, the transition between the tip and the heart and that slope on one blade was just a tiny bit higher, it was causing some of that weird sort of rumbling flatness. But now that I've corrected only in that one spot, listen to the difference in that crow. So there's a lot of rattle that's gone. Um, it's still a little resistant. I still need to do a little bit more and I need to clean up the bottom of the V in the other areas. Um, but I'm definitely getting closer to what I want. Interesting. And <laughs> this is why weird reads are so weird. I thought, well, I'll just play on it just to see what it feels like and what it sounds like. I mean, that is not, that's like night and day from what it was when I first crowed on it. And I just, I just adjusted that one little thing. Okay, but I don't like that. It's sitting at a really sharp V. And I don't know if I can explain this, but as I'm blowing into it, it feels like the back is just too fat. So even though it sounds nice and it responds great, if I were to really play on this, this sucker would be saggy and I would end up, you know, holding it up because it really is not in the realm of where it needs to be in terms of a C. So I'm gonna try to mess around a little bit in the back. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of feeling that, yeah, and it feels like I've got it a little bit reversed. I like there to be a little bit more spring in the back than in the heart. And right now the heart's really collapsing more quickly than the back. So I'm going to mess around with the back now. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm going to see if I can show this. I'm very out of practice with the camera work. All right, so here is your straight up and down um, profile of the tip. And what I'm looking at is what's happening right here on comparing both blades. And even at this angle, you can tell I have sort of two different slopes on each side. Right? They're not quite the same. It's a little bit better, but it, it's still really kind of fat there. But now watch what happens when I turn it like this and I watch the angle. And see, now I can really tell that there's some different things happening in the back. Yeah, see, I've tucked in 
a lot more on this blade than I have on the other. And what I really want to do is even that up. And I have a feeling that once I get this bulk out of the bottom of the back, that that's going to kind of close up the tip and raise the pitch of the curl so I don't need to clip it. Okay, I love it when my instincts are correct. So here's what it looks like now. Okay, I've really gone to town on that slope and check, check this out when you curl on it. I mean, that's without clipping it. And for me, I mean, I like to be on the low side of a C. That's where I'm comfortable. Um, So the moral of the story is for this original crow that was flat, rumbly, um, a little resistant, all I needed to do was really look closely at that transition between the top of the heart and into the tip and even that up and make the slope more um, symmetrical. So I only really ended up doing it on one blade on one side. That was the first thing I did and that really helped. And then I liked the feel of the reed but I didn't like the flatness. And so because of what I felt when I was blowing through it and the way the low crow was kind of um, presenting itself, I, also, I knew that I wanted to do something in the back. So I looked at the slope in the back. Now keep in mind I use a Gilbert gouge. So this, this, what you do in the back is going to depend very much on how your gouge is set up. And for me and the way I blow and the way I scrape reeds and the way I use that gouge, I like that kind of a back. I have good success with that. And so once I went in and cleaned that up, I mean, it's a little flat, but it's, it's, in the ballpark of where I would probably play on it for a little bit and see if it doesn't blow in. That's pretty darn awesome. I wish I would have done that last week when I needed a read before that concert. <laughs> but say lobby. So interesting. All right. I will continue to post um, some videos like this as we go this summer. I don't know how frequently, but I will try to do it as I, you know, come up with some interesting reads that I want to share. All right. Have a good evening, everybody. Bye.